Hi, Yoga Habit. My name is Caitlin. I'm so grateful I get to lead you through another practice. Today will be 75 minutes, so hopefully you can utilize this on a day that you have a little more time for yourself and your practice. Let's begin Child's Pose. Extend your arms long in front of you. Drop your forehead to the earth. Ground down through your hands and pull up and in through your belly. Maybe take some time to offer gratitude for the opportunity to practice today. For a body that has the ability to move and for the ease of your breath. Downward facing dog. Engage your triceps and soften your knees. Activate your breathing. Take two more cycles of breath. Empty out all of your air. And walk to the top of your mat. Ragdoll. Place your feet at 12 o'clock. Grab opposite elbows. And soften your knees. Allow your upper body to hang. Set your eyes at the back of your mat. This physical gaze is a way to stay present, to bring yourself to the present moment. Release your hands. Keep your feet a hip width distance apart or heel till your feet to touch. Take a halfway lift, fill up. Four fold, breathe out. Mountain pose, reach up. Bring your hands to your heart center. Press your thumb knuckles against your chest. And three cycles of sighs. Draw a deep breath in. And sigh. A deep breath in. Sigh. A deep breath in. And sigh. Reach up, look up. Fourfold. Halfway lift. High plank position, step back. Take five cycles of breath in. And out. In. And out. In. Out. Pull your belly in. Two more. In. Out. This time shift forward. Breathe in. Low plank. Upward facing dog. Lift your quads up. Downward facing dog. Three cycles of breath. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Another breath in. 
Empty your air out. Walk or float to the top of your mat. Halfway lift. Forward fold. Mountain, reach up. Bow down. Halfway lift. Low plank, go right to it. See the top of your mat. Upward facing dog. Draw your shoulders straight back. Downward facing dog. Inhale. Sigh. Breath in. Empty out. Press into your finger pads. Breathe in. Empty out. Bend your knees. Walk or float to the top of your mat. Halfway lift. Forward fold. Lengthen the back of your neck. Prasana, reach up, bow down, halfway lift, low plank, upward facing dog, draw your shoulders back, downward facing dog, three breaths in, out, engage your triceps, Soften your heels. Another one, breathe in. Empty out all the way. Walk or float to the top of your mat. Halfway lift. Forward fold. Mountain. Bow down. Halfway lift. Low plank. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Three breaths. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Another long breath in. Empty out your air all the way. Walk or float to the top of your mat. Halfway lift. Forward fold. Chair pose, rise up. Sink your hips back. Rise up, take your upper arms back. Sink your hips back. Spread and lift your ten toes. Empty out your air. Two more, fill up. Empty out. One more, fill up. Forward fold. Halfway lift. Low plank. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Right foot warrior one. Take a long breath in to rise up. Stay to the exhale. Adjust your body if you need to. Provide yourself more space by taking your right foot out to the right. Keep breathing. Press into the outer edge of your back foot. Reach up, maybe back. Hands to mat, chaturanga. Upward facing. Downward facing dog. Left foot warrior one. Rise up, use your legs to rise. And then provide space for your hips by walking your left foot to the left. Deep full breathing. Two more. Last one in. Low plank. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Deep breath in. Empty all your air out. Two more breaths in. Empty all your air out. Last one, inhale. Empty out, exhale. Walk or float to the top of your mat. Halfway lift. Forward fold. Chair, one breath. Bow down. Halfway lift. 
Low plank. Up dog. Downward facing dog. Right foot warrior one. Low plank. Up dog. Downward facing dog. Left foot warrior one. Low plank. Up dog. Downward facing dog. Three breaths. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more. Breathe in. Empty out. Walk or float forward. Halfway lift. Forward fold. Chair pose. Fill. Bow and empty. Halfway lift. Low plank. Up dog. Downward facing dog. Right foot warrior one. Low plank. Upward facing. Downward facing dog. Left foot warrior one. Low plank. Up dog. Downward facing dog. Inhale. Sigh. Inhale. Sigh. Another breath in. Close your lips. Breathe all the way out. Walk or float to the top of your mat. Halfway lift. Forward fold. Chair pose. Rise up. Bow down. Halfway lift, low plank, upward facing dog, downward facing dog, right foot warrior one, this time open warrior two, reverse your warrior, low plank, up dog, downward facing dog. Left foot warrior one, warrior two, reverse your warrior, low plank, up dog, downward facing dog, lift your right heel up, bend your knee and open up your hip, take another long breath in, Stay right here or slowly flip your dog. Bring your feet hip width distance apart and rotate your toes and go slightly in. Extend and reach towards the top of your mat. Take a long deep breath in. Empty out. A long breath in. Empty out. Reach your right arm up. High plank position. Stay here, fill up. Side plank, spin your heels to the right. Fill up together. If you need to, sigh. Four more breaths, in and out. Inhale, exhale. Two more, in, empty out. One more, in, fill up. High plank position. Stay here, inhale. Downward facing dog. Lift your left heel up. Bend your knee, open up your hip. Take another long, slow breath. Stay or slowly flip your dog. Let's set up your foundation. Unlock your right elbow. And create space from your kneecaps all the way to your left fingertips. Lift your left arm up to the ceiling. High plank position. Spin your heels to the left side plank. 
Rotate your top hip right on top of your left. Lift up out of your left shoulder. Feel a deeper breath in. Empty out. Inhale. Exhale. Another one. Inhale. High plank. Stay here. Fill up. Downward facing dog. Lift your right heel up. Draw your knee into your nose. Round your spine. Crescent lunge. Step your right foot forward. Reach forward and then up. Settle into the pose. Bring softness to your back knee so that you have space for your hips. Reach up past your own fingertips. Bring your hands to your heart center. Lean forward over your front thigh. Twist to your right. Draw both shoulders straight back. And you use your left elbow as a gentle leverage for the twist. Draw your chin slightly in so you can lengthen through the back of your neck. Maybe stay here, open up your arms. Take a deep breath in and out. Deep breath in and out. Another deep breath in, empty out, crescent lunge, come back up, warrior two, open. Reverse your warrior, side angle. Stay right here or find extended side angle, take your right hand to the outside of your right foot, reach your left arm overhead. Pull your low ribs in and draw your right side hip back towards the back edge of your mat. Lift up out of your right shoulder. Take three more breaths. Last one in. High plank position. Stay here, inhale. Low plank. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Lift your left heel high. Draw your knee into your nose, round your spine. Crescent lunge. Reach forward and up. Use the strength of your legs to lift. Unlock your right knee, create a neutral pelvis. Reach up even higher. Maybe take your upper arms back, hands to your heart center. Lean forward over your front thigh, twist to the left. Encourage your right side hip up in line with your left. Draw your shoulders away from your ears. Stay here, or maybe open up your arms. Take another breath in. Into your breath, pull your belly in. Crescent lunge, come back up. Warrior two. Reverse your warrior. Side angle. Stay here in side angle or find extended side angle. With your hand at the floor or a block. And then right arm overhead. Try to create a straight diagonal from your back foot all the way through your right fingertips. Breathe into your right side body. Take two more breaths. Last one. High plank position. 
Stay here, fill up. Low plank. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Come high on your toes. Bend your knees, look forward, walk or float to the top of your mat. Halfway lift, forward fold. Chair pose, rise up. Bring your hands to your heart center. Draw your chest on top of your thighs, twist to your right. Engage your inner thighs. Draw your inner ankles back and your outer ankles down. Stay here, open up your arms. Lift your low ribs away from your thighs. Take one more deep breath. Forward fold, release. Take your feet wider than they are now, hip width distance or wider. Wrap your first two fingers around your big toes, palms facing in. Soften your knees, take a halfway lift. Forward fold, drop the crown of your head. Set your eyes again at the back of your mat. And noting that gaze that provides us our presence. As you fix your external gaze, can you also bring a gaze that's internal? Maybe note the sensation at your hamstrings or your low back or through the back of your neck. Release your toes. Halfway lift. Forward fold. Chair pose, rise up. Bring your hands to your heart center. And your chest over your thighs. Twist to your left. Move your shoulder blades together down your back. Draw your chin slightly in. Stay here, open up your arms. Two more. This is the last one in. Forward fold. Take your feet wide, hip width distance or wider. This time walk the palms of your hands underneath the soles of your feet. Bend your knees a lot to get this access. And then soften the top of your body first. And then from there, start to work your heels and hips away from one another but only just slightly. Take your time to open up your body. Maybe after these few breaths, try to lift your sit bones up a little bit higher, away from your heels. Release your hands. Bring your feet back to hip width distance apart or toes touching. Crow pose. Plant your hands and walk your knees to the outsides of your triceps. Lift one heel and then the other and try to do that intentionally. So often we try to rock into the posture and lift up our feet. See if you can place your knees and then with your strength, with your um, engagement of your muscles, lift one foot and then the other. Take three strong breaths. Stay here or maybe go into Malasana for the last few breaths. And Malasana, try just allowing the upper part of your body to release. We'll all meet in Malasana. Your elbows be inside to your thighs. Straighten your spine, draw your shoulder blades back. 
Set your eyes again, still and steady. Forward fold. Halfway lift. Forward fold again. Tadasana, reach all the way up to stand. Eagle on your right. Hug your outer shins in. Let your elbows up to shoulder height. Rise up, breathe in. Left side equal. Ground down into the four corners of your right foot. Lengthen through the back of your neck. Unwind, reach up. Eagle on your right. Watch as your inhale enters your body and arrives at your pelvis. And use your pelvic floor muscles, chase the air out all the way to your nose. Do that a few more cycles, imagining that the breath is entering the pelvis. Engage your pelvic floor muscles and chase the breath out all the way back through your nose. Again. Unwind, reach up. Left side eagle. An invitation again to think about this arrival of the breath, seeing the breath as energy going all the way down to the pelvic floor. And utilize the pelvic floor to draw the breath out. Create contraction. Fill up, breathe in, create energy. And release the air, contract one more. Unwind, reach up. Standing leg raise. Bring your right knee to hip height. Drop your right side hip in line with your left. Stay with your knee or go for your big toe. Open your right knee out to the left. Walk your eyes to the right. Walk your eyes to the left. Hug in through your outer left hip. So draw your outer left hip into the center line of your body. Bring your eyes back center. Your right knee back in center. Reach your arms up. Airplane, reach your heel back. Use your glute muscle to lift your right heel higher. And draw your shoulder blades together down your back to open up your chest. Bring your hands to your heart center. Half moon. You can place the object underneath your left hand. If you choose that option, make sure you come to fingertips to lift out of the object and into your muscular engagement. Soften your left knee. One more breath in. Four fold. Release. Tadasana, reach up. Bring your hands through your heart center to your hips. Catch your left hand with your left knee or your big toe. Open your left knee to the left. Draw your low ribs and knit them in together towards your spine. And patiently walk your eyes over to your right.
Walk your eyes back center and bring your left knee back in center. Reach up, airplane. Take your leg back, take it slow and controlled. Lift and spread your five toes on the floor and up in the air. <laughs> Let that help you, give you knowledge as to where you're putting the weight in your foot. Equally distribute it into all four corners of your right foot. Bring your hands to your heart center. Half moon. Take it slow, open it slow and controlled. Reach your left arm up to the ceiling. Pull your left shoulder blade back toward the midline of your body. Do the same thing with your right. One more breath in. Bow forward. <laughs> Tadasana, rise all the way up to stand. The answer on the right, open your palm out to the right thumb facing the back of your mat. Catch your inner ankle or foot and press your foot and back into your hand and then draw your hand toward the top of your mat against your foot. I find this really helps bring a lot of stability to these postures, these bound postures. Draw your left shoulder blade back. Maybe lift your right foot up a little higher, using that tension, slowly release the windmill to the other side. Start with your knees towards one another, and then push back to begin. And then engage your left hand and push against the press of your left foot. Plug the head of your right shoulder back. Use your strength, maybe lift a little bit higher. And slowly release. Swim onto the other side for another opportunity. <laughs> and right away, press against one another and lift. Hug in through your low belly as if you were buttoning up pants. This is small engagement through your low belly to help protect your low back. Expand from the inside out of your posture. So soften your left knee, maybe lift up a little bit higher. Slowly release, windmill to the other side right away. Create the engagement from your foundation, lift up. Spread your collarbones wide. One more breath in, expand, 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 and slowly release your left foot. Bring your hands to your heart center. Step your right foot into your inner left thigh, tree. Press your hands firmly together and place your thumb knuckles at your chest. Set your eyes, your tool for presence. And again, let that presence be both at an outward point, but also have an inward vision of your mind and the state of your body. Slowly release your right foot to the earth. And lift your left foot into your inner right thigh. Start with your hand at your heart center. Again, press your hands firmly together, thumb knuckles at your chest. This time, interlace your hands at your heart. Press your palms forward and press your palms up to the ceiling. This engagement actually provides the dynamic energy, opposing energy that's happening within the posture. From your belly button to your heel, you're rooted. You have a downward energy. From your belly button all the way through the palms of your hands, there's an upward energy and a lift. Slowly 
Slowly bring your hands back to your heart. And step your left foot to the earth. Sama Sitihi. Take a deep breath in through your nose. And sigh. Tadasana, reach up. Forward fold. Halfway lift. Low plank. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Step your right foot forward. Warrior one. Warrior two. Straighten your right knee. Triangle pose. Unlock your right knee and press down into your big toes. Draw your right shoulder blade back. Maybe take your left arm overhead for a side body stretch. Raise your left arm back up to the ceiling and rise all the way up to stand. Bring your right toes to face the left side of your mat. Hands at your low back. Lift your chest up. Forward fold between your legs. Place your fingers in line with your toes. Bend your elbows to 90 degrees or whatever degrees that you have access to. Press your hands down and forward to help create the hinge at your hip creases. You can also place blocks or objects underneath your hands to bring the floor up to you. Walk your hands back underneath your shoulders, halfway lift. Catch your hips with your hands, rise all the way up to stand. Bring your right toes to face the front of your mat, set up for pyramid. Reach your arms up to the ceiling. Fold halfway down. And pull all the way down, pyramid. Encourage your hips in one line. There's a tendency to lift the right side hip and drop the left. Encourage the hips to stay in one line. Draw the low belly up and then towards your thigh. Bringing chest towards your knee. And then chin towards your shin. Take a few cycles of breathing. Making sure to keep your right knee unlocked. Bring your hands back to frame your front foot. Bring your block or another object to the highest setting to the right side of your right foot. Lift halfway up. Place your left hand on the block. Reach your right up up to the ceiling. Twisting triangle. Take five cycles of breathing. Inhale. And exhale. Another breath in. And breath out. One more. This is it, last one in. Chaturanga, release. Upward facing dog, hold here, fill up. Downward facing dog. Left foot, warrior one. Warrior two. Triangle, straighten your left leg, reach forward. Bring your left hand to your shin or even all the way up to your thigh. Whatever placement is important to allow your spine to get length, the side body to get length. And again, you can take that extended version with your right arm overhead to help extend the side body. Draw both of your shoulders straight back.
Reach your right arm all up to ceiling. Come all the way up to stand. Bring your left toes to face the right side of your mat. And release your hands at your low back. Keep your elbows at a 90 degree angle. Draw your shoulders straight back. And then allow your arms to go overhead. Forward fold. Keep your elbows nice and soft, nice and bent. So you have access to your shoulders. Encourage your shoulder blades to the midline of your body. Press into the outer edges of both feet. Release your hands toward the earth. Halfway lift. Catch your hips with your hands. Rise to stand. Bring your left toes to face the front of your mat. Reach your arms up. Fold halfway down. Pyramid pose, fold all the way down. Again, check that pelvic alignment. I like to place my hand at my sacrum to check this. Encourage your right side hip up, your left side hip back. And then encourage your low belly up and then create length. So your belly falls on your thigh, your chest towards your knee, and then your chin towards your shin. Maybe you find your object and place the outside of your left foot, halfway lift. Place your right hand to the block or to the floor. Reach your left arm up. Keep your hips really stable and strong. So hug your outer hips together. Pull your low belly in. And then find the twist just in the upper body. Draw your left shoulder blade on your back. Pull the head of your left shoulder back. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, stay. Another deep breath in. Exhale, stay. One more deep breath in. Low plank. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Take a moment here. Draw a deep breath in. Provide a sigh. Come behind your toes. Bend your knees up forward, walk or float to a seat for boat pose. Encourage your inner thighs together. And I like to bring my toes at nose height and drop onto my forearms. It's just as hard for me. And it's just the, the level and the place that I'm at in my life. You can also stay lifted. You can straighten your legs. You can extend your arms forward. Hug your inner thighs together. Keep your chest and your collarbone spread wide. Take a few more cycles of breathing. Trying to keep your breath as stable as you can. This is the last one in. Slowly release all the way to your back. Hug your knees into your chest, bring your forehead to your knees. Bring your knees directly on top of your hips so your legs are at a 90 degree angle. Bicycle twist. Take your head, hands behind your head, elbows wide. Straighten your right leg and twist your right elbow to your left knee. And then switch. And then switch. I find that this posture and this set of abdominal work actually um, really gets enhanced when I keep my elbows as wide as I can and I work my shoulders towards my knees. So maybe try that on so you can receive the maximum benefit of the abdominal work. These twists actually work both the outside of both of your obliques. They're on the sides of your body, side of your abdominal walls. A few more cycles. Try to keep your elbows wide, really lift your left shoulder, right shoulder, and release down. Bring your legs all the way up to the ceiling, your palms right next to your hips. Drop your right leg halfway down and switch with your left. Drop to your right, 
Switch with your left. Two more. Drop your right. Switch with your left. Bring both legs up. Press your toes up towards the ceiling. Drop your heels a quarter of the way down. Stay right here. Bring all of your attention to your low back. You want your low back to really as close to the ground as you can. Notice if there's a big space between your low back and the floor. That'll create a lot of strain on your low back. So either stay here if this is enough for your abdominals or maybe lower to 50, 50%. I'm gonna stay at a quarter. That's plenty for my body. <laughs> you can stay at a quarter, maybe try half or maybe try 25% up off the floor. Wherever you are, let's stay together for five more breaths. Engage your belly on every exhale. Two more breaths. Last one. Hug your knees in. Whew. Rock forward and back. Take big body rocks. And work your way through vinyasa or just meet in downward facing dog. Vinyasa is high to low plank. Up dog and down dog. In your low and your downward facing dog, say your eyes again the back of your mat. Remind yourself you are here. Offer up gratitude for your body, for its movement, for your ease of breath. Come forward to a high plank position. Lower all the way to your belly for a low fist. Extend your arms long behind you. Press your toenails into the earth. Press your hands out into the earth. Peel your chest slowly off of the earth. Gently press your pubic bone down into your mat. And find the heads of your shoulders. Draw the heads of your shoulders back. Last one in. Slowly release down. Find rest. Maybe rock your hips from right to left. Bring your forehead back to center. Pull locust. Lift your feet, lift your hands to a hover and lift your chest. Straighten your legs as much as you possibly can. And then use your gluteus maximus to lift your heels up a little bit higher. Keep that nice press in your pubic bone so that you're not relying on your low back to lift this posture up. Use your upper back muscles your rectus spinae, and your glute muscles. One more fill up and release down. Bend your knees and grab the outsides of your ankles or feet. Now just like dancer, first create the press and the engagement through the legs to lift yourself up. And then press back against your feet with your hands to create the stability of the posture. Flex your toes towards your shin. Release down. Keep your knees bent and windshield wipe your heels back and forth. Bring your feet back to center. A second bow. Again, use that dynamic Press, press through your shin to press back through your hands. Create the resistance. Slowly release down. Windshield wipe your heels right to left. Plant your hands by your ribs, upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Drop to your knees for camel. For some people, they like to place a block as high as they can between their thighs. This actually helps keep your pelvis really steady. I also like to start with my toes tucked under behind me to help create a lot more stability. 
or your hands at your low back. Fingertips facing down like you're putting your hands in jean pockets. And there is a tendency in all back bends for the low ribs to splay out. Try to draw the low ribs in and lift just from the chest. Good. Keep engagement through the low belly like you're buttoning up a pair of pants. And stay here, or maybe drop all the way onto your heels. Again, keep your low ribs slightly in. Lift up through your chest, and maybe your head and neck will follow. Press down through your feet and slowly come up. Find tabletop position to neutralize your spine. Yeah, feel free to take a cat and cow. Come back to the neutral spine. Lift back up into camel. Now camel got its names because camels actually stand up by pressing their shin down. So maybe this time try with your toes untucked, press into your shins, lift and spread up into your chest. For this variation, you can join me and bring your arms out to bull post arms or cactus arms. And keeping a lot of engagement in the low belly to find the opening in the upper body. Lift your elbows up to the ceiling. Allow your palms of your hands to drop back. Breathe into your chest. Find another breath in. Slowly release. Downward facing dog. Come high on your toes. Bend your knees, look forward, walk or float between your hands to your back for bridge. Lift your hips up and encourage your shoulder blades towards one another. Press your forearms into your mat. Slowly release down. Take rest with one breath. We'll take five more back bends, so stay here, take bridge or wheel. Go ahead and find the posture. Start by pressing down into your foundation. Bring your toes slightly inward. Encourage your chest towards your chin, but keep your chin slightly lifted away from your chest. Slowly release down. Inhale through your nose. Sigh, find relief. Bridge, rest, or wheel. This time maybe interlace your hands at your low back. Press your forearms down. There's a tendency to take the feet out wide. Instead, encourage your toes inwards towards the center of your body. Slowly release down. A deep breath in, sigh, release out, three more, bridge, wheel, or rest. Try to make sure that each time you're finding what's best for your body. And you're tending toward what the body needs to find the greatest balance. There are days where we need more mobility and days where we need more stability. Slowly release. Take a deep breath in. Empty out. Bridge, wheel, or rest. And this time, when you lift up, make sure that you're not clenching your butt cheeks. It's a tendency for all of us because of the action of the posture. But to help you not do this, release your hips so slightly and press forward through your chest. Take another deep breath in. Slowly release. Inhale. Find rest. And before we go for our last back bend, I invite you to think of someone that you do this practice for. Who do you want to be well for? Who do you want to be balanced for in mind and body and soul? And then take the posture that would suit that wellness for yourself 
and for others. Let's find the posture that you've chosen together for five cycles of breath. Last one in. Slowly release down. Supta Baddha Konasana. Take the soles of your feet together, wings out wide. Bring one hand to your heart and one to your belly. I invite you to offer gratitude for your movement. Oh, it is the great gift of the range of movement you have in your body. Your strength. Your mobility. And the gift of your breath. Slowly bring your knees together. Add your knees into your chest and grab the outsides of your shins or your ankles or your feet. I also like to create resistance here by pressing up into my hands and then pressing my hands down against my feet. Rock your pelvis slightly forward. Slowly have your knees into your chest. Rock forward and back on your mat. Take a few body rocks. To downward facing dog, feel free to work through a vinyasa, a high to low, up dog, down dog, or just find downward facing dog. Let your right heel up to the ceiling. Half pigeon on your right. Draw your right knee to your right wrist. Use your hands to the sides of your hips. Engage your outer hips, lift up slightly. Take a deep breath in through your nose. And on your exhale, release down into the posture. You can place your forearms on your mat. Maybe stack your hands on the mat, place your forehead on the earth. You can also utilize props underneath your right hip or underneath your left thigh. Relax your jaw. Slowly lift up onto your hands. Drop onto your right hip and bring your left foot around up front. Set up for double pigeon. I like to set up the posture so that my knees are a little bit outside of my hips. So they're not necessarily tracking right in front of my hips. Place your hands on either side of your hips. So now if you're here, or if you're like me and you're here, start with your right hand on the floor and place your left hand on your left knee. Really gently work the resistance. Press your left knee up against your hand and press down against your, your left knee. I find that this helps bring a lot of ease into getting into the posture. Helps my hip find a little bit more mobility. You're pressing up and pressing down. Few more cycles of breath, maybe you stay lifted, maybe you fold forward.
And then whatever way you can get there, downward facing dog. Lift your left heel up. Half pigeon on your left. Take a moment again to press and hug in through your outer hips. Draw a deep breath in, lift up. On your exhale, softly release into your hips. On this side, maybe lift your palms up to the ceiling if you have access to do that. And notice that all the gratitude that you've extended throughout this practice is an affirmation of goodness. A celebration of gifts and good that you have been given. In this hand posture, allow yourself to receive that affirmation of goodness, those gifts. Slowly lift your chest, swing your back legs around to the front of your mat. Set up for double pigeon on your right, stacking your right ankle bone on top of your left knee. And again, if you're like me and your right knee is lifted pretty high, maybe work again that small encouragement and mobility for the hip. I feel like it helps bring a lot of circulation and movement into the hip. Stay lifted or maybe fall forward, forward. Slowly release out of the posture. Find downward facing dog for a moment. Drop your knees to tabletop for frog pose. I like to take one knee off of my mat to the floor. Start in tabletop position and encourage your knees away from one another. Bring the insteps of your feet to the floor. Walk your forearms down to the ground. And stay here. Make sure that your hips are in line with your knees. So the tendency is to have your hips really far forward, but try to bring your hips in line with your knees. And pull your low belly up and in. Or stay for five strong cycles of breath. Try to count them. Or if you don't like counting, maybe associate in and out. Or lift and root. Two more cycles. Come out of the pose, slowly shift forward, extend your legs back, press up through tabletop to downward facing dog. Walk through your hands to a seat. Extend both legs forward for a seated forward fold. I like to keep my feet wide at a small V. Unlock your knees, lift your arms up, and slowly release again your belly to your thigh, your chest towards your knees, and your chin eventually towards your shins. Encourage your shoulders straight back.
Slowly lift up. Bring your left foot to the inside of your right thigh for a single leg extension. Same alignment applies. Lift up through your low ribs. Encourage your low belly towards your thigh. Your chest forward towards your toes to your knee. Your chin towards your shin. Hinge only at your hip, hip crease. Instead of rounding forward to try to receive the posture, you'll receive the posture best when you keep your spine straight. Slowly come up and switch legs. Extend your left leg forward, your right foot into your inner left thigh. Align your spine up with your leg and find the fold. Slowly lift up. Reverse tabletop, plant your feet on the ground. Lift your hips up in line with your knees. If it's okay for your head and neck, you can allow your chin to lift up and lift up and back. Take a deep breath in through your nose and sigh. Another deep breath in through your nose and sigh. Another deep breath in through your nose and release back down to your seat. Extend both legs forward, point your toes, place your hands underneath your hips. Drop onto your elbows. Fish pose. Press into your forearms. And again, if it's comfortable for you, either look up at the ceiling or allow your head to drop back. Take a few cycles of breath. Slowly release all the way to your back. Create an inversion of your choice. So I like to find waterfall at this point in practice. I'm going to place a block underneath my sacrum. You can also replace a rolled up towel at your sacrum. And let the soles of your feet up to the ceiling. You have shoulder stand and also head stand as an option if those are in your practice and you feel familiar with them. Allow your feet to knock in towards one another. And encourage your heels directly on top of your hips. Allow the circulation and the blood flow to drift down your legs back towards your heart. Slowly release your feet back toward the earth. Remove the block from underneath your body. Bring your elbows out to a T. Bring your legs together and drop both of your knees to the right. Make sure that your hips are stacking up on top of one another so your left hip is directly on top of your right. And then allow your left arm and left shoulder to drop however it lands. So my left shoulder doesn't meet the earth. Maybe yours does. Create a gentle twist. Slowly bring your knees back and towards center and drop both of your legs over to the left. Make sure that your right hip is directly on top of your left. And then however your right shoulder and right elbow land, let that be okay and be in the restorative and the passive aspect of this posture. Twist just through your upper spine. Come back up through center. 
Hug both of your knees into your chest. Draw your forehead to your knees. Draw a long, slow breath in. And Shavasana. Encourage your shoulder blades a little bit to get on your back. And allow yourself to be held by the earth. Take note of your open palms again. And maybe find this ability to receive. Receive and affirm goodness. Begin to deepen your breath. Bring small movements to your body, to your fingers, and to your toes. Slowly draw your knees into your chest and roll to your right side body. I invite you to offer yourself the phrase, may I be well. An invitation to bring to mind someone who brings you great joy, someone who makes you smile. To them, may you be well. An invitation to all beings everywhere, all living things, may all be well. Press yourself up to a comfortable seat. Bring your hands at your heart center. Three deep sighs. Draw a deep breath in and sigh. Soften your shoulders. Deep breath in and sigh. Deep breath in and sigh. Bring your thumb knuckles to your forehead center. In honor of each other in this practice, let's bow together and say namaste. Namaste. May you be well as you leave. Thank you for joining me today.